covet the best gifts of the Spirit to be in operation. Father, we've gathered together not to have church, but to be the church that you've called and created us to be. I thank you, Lord, as I deliver your word that I decrease, allow you to increase in my life. All of you, none of me. I thank you for your anointing that it rests not just in me, but upon me to deliver your word with clarity, with boldness, with conviction, with creativity. Let it penetrate the hearts and the minds of the men and women present here under the sound of my voice. Satan, you are defeated, you are bound, you are broken, you have no place in this service. You cannot and you will not hinder anyone in any way, form or fashion from getting the spiritual needs met on today. Father, we declare people will be saved today. People will rededicate their lives to you today. People will recommit to you today. People will be filled with the Holy Spirit today. Lives will be changed today. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst. That we do have faith for the supernatural. Move, Holy Spirit, as you see fit. Speak to us. Love on us. Minister to us. Give us your wisdom and guidance. Teach us all truth. Jesus, be glorified in our midst. Be glorified in all that we do. Be the center of your church. Be the center of our speech. Be the center of our actions. And God, you're El Elyon, the most high God, the sovereign God, the creative God, the possessor of heaven and earth. It's you we worship. It's you we praise. It's your glory that fills this room. So we thank you, Lord, for what's going to take place. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration and thanksgiving for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, do me a favor. High five your neighbor. Ask them their name. Ask them if this is your first time. It's good to see you. Let's have a little fellowship. Don't sit down yet. Just talk to your neighbor for a little bit. Introduce them. Donkey. Bye. How y'all doing this morning? You ready for the word? Switching up, we're gonna go right into the word this morning. Uh, how many of you been blessed so far by faith for the supernatural? How many of you been seeing some supernatural things happening in your life? Got to show up. Okay. I believe today will be my last um, message of the intro. This was all just an introduction. I had to just lay some groundwork, I had to lay some, some foundation, I had to break up some, some ground. I'm going to do that again today. Say, Pastor, we love you. It's a man of God. We love you. Papa, we love you. Okay, let's try this one. Oh, great one. Okay, no, it's too far, it's too far, it's too far. Um, but I pray you still love me after today's message. Uh, I've got to teach this and, 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 and pound you with this one uh, so that I can do what I need to do next week. Say next week is going to be great. You don't want to miss next week. If you're an every other Sunday type Christian, stop today. I and mean, I know it's less of us because of the trade fair and the Heroes Weekend, and some of y'all are probably even really celebrating no hero. You just away because it's a hero weekend. Um, but but all those who are here today, celebrate yourself. Uh, we got some uh, special visitors with us on this morning. Uh, Daryl Eaton from from Los Angeles. Or oh, you're Seal Beach now, though, huh? Is it still the same though? Yeah, from Los Angeles. We, were, we all went to church together as little kids, and now he's a grown man. Married, huh? Yeah, well, I've got three. And I am trusting God to stop there, amen. 
But, uh, Gerald, great to have you with us on today, uh, visiting with us this morning. Then we've got uh, my, my great friend, my good friend, Uncle Lazarus, your uncle, our uncle, everybody's uncle. Uncle Lazarus and his wife uh, are with us celebrating their marriage. They just got married a few weeks ago, really. I mean, okay, a couple months. Still a few weeks. Uh, great to have you in church. It's an honor and a privilege. Please critique me afterwards and let me know how I did, okay? Just let me know how I did. And then, we, then our auntie... Who's the pastor? Okay, our auntie's back in town, you know, with us. And so good to have Auntie John with us. The, uh, <clears throat> the queen mother of this house. Amen. So if you got a Bible, go to Ezekiel chapter number 36. Um, continuing on last week's lesson, we're just going to teach it again. Holy Spirit told me just to teach it again. Excuse me, is this seat taken? Excuse me, is this seat taken? The Holy Spirit wants to be engaged with you. The Holy Spirit wants to be involved in every area of your life. The Holy Spirit wants to be woven into every fiber of your being. The Holy Spirit wants to be that silent listener to every conversation. He wants to be that, that unknown guest at every meal. The Holy Spirit wants to be a part of every single, say every, every single decision that you make. The Holy Spirit wants to be a part of it. I guarantee you if the Holy Spirit was leading your life, uh, you wouldn't be having sex before marriage. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Where you have sex is atmosphere. If the Holy Spirit is there, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Could you imagine if, the, if a worship song came on while you were fornicating? Could you imagine what that would feel like? Some of y'all, some of y'all, this message is going to mess you up. The next time... You flick off them lights with that boy, it's going to come on in your head. Holy, oh, get away from me. Just killed the mood, Holy Spirit. No, he's doing his job. If he killed the mood, he did his job. He did his job. <laughs> Can you imagine? You smoking some daha. <laughs> Holy. I thought I was smoking. No, that's the, that's the Shekinah. The Holy Spirit wants to be woven into every single area of your life. And, and the interesting thing about our church is there's a lot of young people in our church. And a lot of young people feel like, you know, if I'm, if I'm serving God, you know, I can't really have fun. So a lot of us, we have one foot in the church and one foot out. Come on. We have one foot in the things of God, one foot out of the things. I wonder what Pharaoh's would be like if I walked up in there with my clergy collar and my Bible, and I grabbed the microphone. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, Jesus said. I guarantee you, them drinks, them bottles would not be popping. Everybody be like, give me an appetizer, give me an appetizer, give me an appetizer. Give me a, give me a grape tizer, give me a grape tizer, so it can look like I got wine. But we, we've got to get to the point, and I, that's why i got to do this. I wanted to show you the supernatural. Walking in the supernatural means you've come to a place where you've done all that you can do. You've come to a place, you've done all that you've known to do, all that you can do, all that sort of thing, your power to do. God, I need you to show up and show out because if not, I don't know what's going to happen next. The supernatural. But my lifestyle's got to match to what I want God to do. And so I want to make sure, I talked about it last week, I want to make sure this week that you get your lifestyle in order. Say, in order. Because if your lifestyle is out of order, you can't expect God to show up in your life. Here's a great example. Anybody ever gone to the toilet? In public? You know, not saying in public, but the toilet restrooms. Anybody ever gone to the toilet restrooms? Have you ever walked in and there was one that said, out of order? Did you go into it? Why? You went to the one that was? So the one that's out of order, nobody uses because it's out of? But the toilet that's in order, everybody goes to that one because it's in? 
So if it's out of order, nobody uses it. But if it's in order, everybody what? Now, come on, think about the things of God. If you're out of order, how do you expect God to use you? Now, before you say amen to that, make sure your life is in order. Because if it's out of order, you can't have the expectation that God's going, well, you know what? God blessed me the other week. No, no, no. God didn't bless you. That was grace. Grace is unmerited favor, meaning you didn't deserve it. It just showed up, meaning you can't work for it. It just showed up. But you can't live your life on hoping and praying that something shows up. I want something determined, predetermined that's going to show up, and that's the blessing of God in my life. And the only way to have the blessing of God in my life is to get my life in order. Say in order. Y'all like, man, I wasn't going to come to church today, and something told me to come. That was the Holy Spirit told you to come to church so you can get your life in order. Okay. Ezekiel 36, you there? Okay, verse 26. It says, And I will give you a new heart with new and right desires, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out of your, out of your, your stony heart of sin and give you a new obedient heart, and I will put my spirit in you so you will obey my laws and do whatever I command. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Look at this. He said, I'm, I'm going to put my spirit in you. Okay? This is going to bless you today. I promise you, you're going to give me an offering today. I'll put my spirit in you so you will what? Obey. I'll put my spirit in you so that you will obey. Obey. I'll put my spirit in you so that you will obey my laws and do whatever I command. Write this down. The Holy Spirit helps you to obey the law. The Holy Spirit helps you to obey the law. Now, when I'm talking about the law, I'm not talking about the Old Testament but he helps you to obey the commands of your God, of your Lord, of your Savior. Now, now, now get this. I'm reading here, it says, Obey my laws and do whatever I command. Now, if you're, if you're in the army, usually there's a commanding officer, someone who outranks you. The outranking officer usually will give you uh, 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 instructions. He will give you commands, right? If you go to war, you follow the commands of your commanding officer, uh, typically to keep you safe and so that you can win the war. You with me? So if a command is given, if you follow the command, that will help you to win the war that you're in, the battle that you're facing. So that means the Holy Spirit, his job is to help me to obey the command so that I can experience the good life. Because if you don't follow the, com the commands of, the, of the, uh, the outranking officer, then you'll be held in insubordination, right? What's it called? What's the actual term? Huh? We don't have no army people? If the, uh, huh? Court martial. You'd be court martial. That's good. Thank you. Okay, you let me down to this. Down the right path. You'll be court, you'll be court martial because you didn't obey the, the the commands, which means you can be put out. But if you follow the commands, then you get to stay in, right? Under the protection of who's who's outranking you, right? Your commander. So the, the Holy Spirit is saying that God gives us commands, but it's His job, the Holy Spirit, to help you to operate in those commands. Now get this, y'all. Get this. If the Holy Spirit helps me to obey the law, then the Holy Spirit will allow me and help me to experience Deuteronomy 28. Okay, go to Deuteronomy 28. Do you know where Deuteronomy is? It's not a dance either. Deuteronomy. Do, did you get it? Do Deuteronomy. Hey, Deuteronomy. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, Deuteronomy 28, you hear? Guess what verse? Verse 1. I'm reading from the New Living. It might sound a little different, but I, I, I pray it bless you. It says, if you fully obey. Not just obey, but fully 
obey the Lord your God by keeping all the commands I am giving you today, the Lord your God will exalt you above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Look at the first word there, if. If. If you fully obey the Lord your God by keeping all the commands I am giving you today, the Lord your God will do what? Exalt you above all the nations of the world. Okay, Edison, can I use you again? I know you're ready, right? We're not going to run today. Get, up, get on the stage. And, uh... <clears throat> Okay, everybody see Edison? Okay, Edison, stand right behind me. Stand right behind me, okay. Who's, who's exalted? Huh? Edison, okay. Who can you see better? Why? So who were we really looking at then? Huh? Who, who, who are you looking at? Really, Edison, because you can see him a lot better, right? So if I do this, can you, can you see what I'm doing with my hands? In the front row, you can, right? That's why you should be sitting up close. <laughs> Auntie Celeste, all the way in the back, can you see what I'm doing with my hands? No? Okay, Edison, see what I'm doing with my hands? Okay, start doing it. Am I doing it like that? Is it on the, in front or is it on the side? It's on the side. Look where my hands are, on the side. Okay. Start doing it on this side. Can you see that, Auntie Celeste? So the person that's exalted, you can follow. The one who's been exalted, you can follow their directions because they're... The one who's been exalted, you, you've, got a, uh, you've got an example on what to do. Right? If I'm telling you to go like this, and you can't see it, but the one who's been exalted, you can see what I'm... Don't do the wrong finger, though. <laughs> Auntie Celeste, can you still see? Which means, get this, the moment I've been saved is the moment I've been exalted. Which means people are watching me. So if I'm living the lifestyle that's not correct with the things of God, people will begin to think that's how Christians should be living. And then if you're connected to a specific church, and I remember, like I said last week, I can only talk about Koi, then everybody be like, well, that's how Koi acts. That's how they, because that must be what they pastor teach. You ain't never seen me in Pharaohs. <laughs> What's the other one? DMT? DNT. DNT. Something D with a T in it, and either M or N in it, in the middle. Something. You ain't never seen me at 213. Is it 213? 318. You ain't never seen me at Jokers or JJ's. You ain't never seen me with a beer in my hand. You ain't never seen me smoking Daha. You may have heard me talk about it, but you ain't never synced it. You ain't never seen me sleeping with another woman other than my wife. Mm -hmm. Sleeping with a married man. What's wrong with you? Well, he's going to leave his wife. Well, if he left his wife, he's willing to leave you as well. My bad. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit led me on that one. <laughs> that was nothing but the Holy Spirit right there. So, so you see Edison, right? If you've been exalted, then you got to check your lifestyle. Because your lifestyle is what's going to lead others to think they can live for Christ that way. And the church says, it's mighty quiet in this building. Come on, saints of God. I just don't you like this message, is okay? Okay, cool. Okay, now look at this. Look at this. Stay right there. Edison. Don't move. No, stay right there. Stay right there. He says, in verse 2, you will experience all these blessings 
if you obey the Lord your God. Verse 3, you will be blessed in your towns and in the country. You will be blessed with many children and productive fields. You will be blessed with fertile herds and flocks. You will be blessed with baskets overflowing with fruit and with kneading bowls filled with bread. You will be blessed wherever you go, both in coming and in... That's good, right? To be blessed wherever I go, right? Wherever, what's the wherever? Wherever, right? Verse 7, the Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. If you obey. The Lord will bless everything you do and will fill your storehouses with grain. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you if you obey the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he solemnly promised to do. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord and they will stand in awe of you. Can I, should I keep going? Okay, let's keep going. The Lord will give you an abundance of good things in the land he swore to give your ancestors many children. Anybody want children? Many children. Numerous livestock. Anybody got a farm that need more livestock? Abundant crops. Anybody need more crops on their farm? The Lord will send rain at the proper time. Anybody need some rain on their farm? Anybody need some rain in their country? from his rich treasury in the heavens to bless all the work you do. You will lend to many nations, but you will never need to borrow from them. Woo! If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God and carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you will always have the upper hand. Now here's the kicker right here. You must not turn away from any of the commands I am giving you today to follow after other gods and worship them. Here's the question. Thanks, Edson. Here's the question. But be ready again, okay? Just give me your heads up. Here's the question. Have we turned away? Have we turned away? Because it talks about the end. As long as you just don't turn away and begin to worship other gods. What has become a god to you? Has work become your God? I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to come to groundwork. Why? Because I'm working. Has work become your God? Why am I working? Because I need more money. Has money become your God? The Bible tells us you can only serve one person. You can't serve two masters. So has money become your God? Why is it when pastors talk about money, everybody gets quiet? The moment they just formulate their lips and say, mmm, everybody gets quiet. Mmm. Has that become your, that you've turned away from the things of God because you're, ch- you, 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 maybe you're even in a job that corrupts your morals. You know God would not be pleased. With you. you serving drinks? What you serving drinks for? Serving drinks to folk. Well, it's a, it's a way for me to get money. But now you're serving everybody some alcoholic beverages. Just think about that. I mean, you can't be led by the Spirit of God and be selling Daha. Could you imagine, hey, hey, break me off with two of them things and stop on that package. Sorry, that's the wire. If you've never seen the wire, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. But he says here, he says here, you must turn away from any of the, uh, you must not turn away from any of the commands I'm giving you today to follow after other gods and worship them. Some of us, we're worshiping the wrong thing. We've got more trust in our government than we do in God. We've got more trust in the doctor than we do in God the healer. Write this down. Obeying commands produces results. Obeying commands produces results. I can go even deeper than that and say obeying God produces the supernatural in my life. 
okay? Now, here's the question of the day. Y'all ready for this? I still got about four hours. Don't look at the clock. I'll, I'll control the clock, don't worry. Still got about five hours to go. Here we go. Because I want to see us walking in supernatural power. Now, literally, I want to see, come on, church. I want to see us, not me, us walking in the supernatural power of God. If you see somebody that's sick, I want to see you laying hands on the sick and then they recover. I want us to, you know, get houses and cars supernaturally, knowing, you know, it wasn't no way in tarnations that I could get this thing, but God showed up. Come on. How, how, do we, how do we begin to follow the commands of God? How do we begin to follow the commands of God? How do we begin to obey what God is telling us to do? Like if God told you to empty out your bank account and sow it into someone's life, how do you, <laughs> how do you obey? Like you got to go walk. I mean, I think about it. How would you be walking to the bank to go empty out your bank account? Could you imagine if you had to put that EFT up and just, you know, you only had was $3 in there and you sent it to somebody. And then you're looking at your accountant and it's zero. But think about Abraham. Abraham had to take his son, his only son, the son that he loved, the son that he'd been trusting God for. And God said, take him, put him on the altar, sacrifice him. There's only, the only son, his, his inheritance. It, how do you think he felt? He woke up early in the morning, worshiped. Isaac, let's roll. Got Isaac. Gave Isaac some fire, gave Isaac knife, had the rope to bundle, and, like, and told the two young men that were with him, hey, me and my son, we're going to go worship. We're going to come back to you. Now, I, Abraham, God told you that you're going to kill your son. How are you going to tell these two people that you, you're coming back with your son? Because he said we. Genesis 22, look at it. He said we, we're going to come back. And then he walks Abraham with boldness up the mountain. And Isaac gets to the point where he's like, hey, dad. Uh, stop. In, in all humility and humbleness of heart, you are my father. I love you. Like, and and I mean, Isaac's talking to him like, you, like the song says, you're a good, good father. He's probably singing it to him. Like, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, right? He's talking to his dad. And Abraham is like, yeah, I love you. Yeah, I, I, thank you. I know you love me. I love you. We love each other. He says, okay, cool. Thanks. You. I, I appreciate you that you love me, that you said that. Uh, but I see the fire. I see the rope. I see the wood. I see the knife. But I don't see a sacrifice. Would you want to, can you let me in on what your God is saying to you? And I love Abraham's response. It's so gangster. It's, can I say gangster? I'm going to write a book. God is a gangster. Anyway, I love it because he said he turns to his son and says, God will provide for himself a sacrifice. Now, that, that lets you in on something. He understands the God that he serves. And he's willing to obey even at the detriment of something that he loves. If you want to walk in the supernatural, you got to be willing to give up everything to obtain what God has for you. And I love it. They must have walked up that mountain and they must have had a full-fledged conversation. Get this. God provided here. God provided here. Matter of fact, yo, you don't even know this, but your mama's womb was double dead. She couldn't even have a baby. Matter of fact, she tricked me into having an affair with another chick so that they could have a son. And then when she had the son, she got mad at me. Can you believe that? Your mama got mad at me because she told me to go sleep with the dude and sleep with the girl. And I slept with her. And we had, I mean, you know, I, I'm still functioning. I'm still a man. We had a baby, me and Hagar had a baby, Ishmael. She got mad. Who? Your mama, Sarah, she got mad. Well, I mean, dad, kind of think about it. Like, I mean, she, she sees the woman happy because she's got your baby, and now everybody in town is talking about, you know, come on, you know, Ventuk's so small. I'm just saying, if it was in Ventuk, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to bring the story here. You know how, you know, Ventuk is very small, right? You think nobody knows your business, but everybody knows your business. The best thing to do is, is keep all your business on Snapchat because at least if someone takes a picture of it, you, you'll know. But nonetheless, they're walking up this mountain talking, but God provides. God will provide. We were trusting God for you, and you showed up. And they get up to the mountain, and then Isaac laid himself down on the altar. Can you imagine? He put himself on the altar to die. 
he was willing to give up his own life because he believed in the God that his God served. Are you willing to give up everything to be obedient to what God is telling you to do? Okay, how do we do this? How do we do this? Go to Galatians. Go to Galatians. You getting something? Okay. You're going to get this right now. Remember we said last week, the Holy Spirit wants to be woven into every fiber of your being. He, he wants to be in every decision. When you, when you go to work, Holy Spirit, lead me on how to talk to people. Holy Spirit, lead me on how to make the best decision for this, 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 this job that I'm in. Um, you get that email. <laughs> Lord, Holy Spirit, show me how to respond to this crazy person. Help me to put as much love in this message as possible. Anybody ever been that way? You got that email and you wanted to fire back. I mean, you wanted to, matter of fact, you didn't even want to send the email. You wanted to walk down to their office, to their cubicle. Uh, you know, I got that email. <laughs> Take off your Christianity real quick. Uh, listen here. Holy Spirit, show me how to walk in He wants to be woven in every fiber of your being. Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 16. I'm reading from the New Living Translation because it's, it's so powerful the way it puts it. It says, so I advise you to live according to your new life in the Holy Spirit. So now get this, y'all. In Ezekiel 36, he's saying that I'm going to put my spirit in you. He's restoring Israel. In Deuteronomy 28, he's telling them, if you can obey the law, if you fully obey the law and my commands, all of these blessings are going to happen. But guess what? In and of themselves, the children of Israel could not keep the law. That's like saying, you know, the bank says, I'm going to give you a million NAM dollars. I'm going to give you a million NAM dollars if, get this, if you can keep more than a million and one NAM dollars in your account before we give it to you. It's impossible, right? If you don't have a million damn dollars in your account right now, how are you going to keep a million and one in there if you ain't got a million in there, right? So he's saying, God knows I, you can't keep this law, but if you do it, this is an incentive. If you keep it. Now, every year they had an opportunity of a, of a mass sacrifice to clear away all of their sins. So 360... Five days, right? On 364, they come, come together, they put all their sins on this goat, right? And then they send it into the wilderness. That's why it's called an escape goat. You ever heard that term, escape goat? That was, the goat is your way of escape back then. So that meant once that thing got destroyed, they, uh, they could put the sacrifice, the blood on the altar, everything was cleared up for you, right? Then that meant on 365, 366, day one, you fresh so clean. None's wrong with you. You're perfect. Now, how many of y'all be staying perfect like the new year? The new year, you come out with, a, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And you last for about three weeks. New diet. New me. New way of thinking. I'm going to conquer this. You get the post. This is day one, the first page of 365. And then you get to day two and you already done messed up. So in Deuteronomy 28, God already knew, you can't keep it, but this is the incentive if you can. Ezekiel, he's saying, I'm going to give you the, my spirit so that you can begin to keep it, right? Because they didn't have the Holy Spirit back then. The prophet did, but the people didn't. But the moment Jesus died and he said, it's to your advantage that I go. Why? So that the helper, the comforter, the Holy Spirit can come. Why? So he can help you live the life that you live. If you struggle with sin, Holy Spirit, help me to overcome this thing. Holy Spirit, give me some people that can hold me accountable to the life I'm supposed to live. Holy Spirit, I don't want to do this anymore. Lead me on how to get over this. And I'm pretty sure he's probably been talking to you, telling you to change your environment. Holy Spirit, I want to stop drinking. Well, stop hanging around people who drink. Stop putting yourself in the environment where you drink. 
Stop keeping the alcohol in your house. Avoid, maybe send someone else to go get your groceries if you can't pass by tops. And oh, y'all know what I'm talking about, huh? And they put it, and they put it, they put it in the best place possible. Right up front. Oh man, they got that rose two for one. I tell you, man, I just got paid too. Gosh, doggy. I ain't got nothing to do this weekend. They got that rose. Oh my gosh, they done got that Patron on sale. The green one too. You know, if I could do that and put that on my Instagram, everybody'd be like, man, they got money over there. Send somebody else to get your groceries. So you stop. Are you with me, church? At a certain point, we got to start get living a lifestyle, a godly lifestyle. Not just any rinky-dink lifestyle, but a godly lifestyle. At a certain point, we've got to do that, and the Holy Spirit helps that. He says, so I advise you to live according to your new life in the Holy Spirit. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. This old sinful nature loves to do evil. Turn to your neighbor and say, evil. Turn to your other neighbor and say, evil. Turn behind you and say, evil. See, look, they wouldn't even look at you. That's just evil. You're trying to talk to them, and they won't even look at you. He's saying, your old sinful nature loves to do evil. It loves to do it. It thrives on it. It enjoys it. Paul is telling the church of Galatians, look, I'm being honest with you, man. The sinful nature, it loves to do evil, which just, is just opposite from what the Holy Spirit wants. The Spirit gives us desires that are opposite from what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, and, and, and your choices are never free from this conflict. Ooh, 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 ooh. Has anybody ever decided to do the right thing? And then all of a sudden, it's like Google knows it, and it starts to, it starts to post things into your feed that like... You decide, I'm not going to the club tonight, I'm going to stop clubbing. Matter of fact, it's, I mean, I mean, it's nothing wrong with clubbing, but, you know, the, uh, God says avoid the very appearance of evil. Therefore, let me stay home and create the club here. We're going to play uh, uh, cards and not poker because that could lead to other things. We're going to play go fish. But you decided, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden in your feet is all of these parties. And this person's hosting the party, and that one's hosting the party, and this one's hosting the party. And then all of a sudden, you start getting these WhatsApp mess messages. This one's got a party. Come to this party. This one's a party. And it's free before 20. And they be setting you up. Ladies, it's free before uh, uh, 10 o'clock. And, you know, all the ladies come in at 10. And then the fella's like, oh, man, if it's free for all the ladies, then let's go up in there. And, you know, you be posted up in the club. And, you know, ain't nothing good happening in there. You be posted up. Come on, fellas. You know, you can't afford that drink. Matter of fact, you told him to add some extra water to it so it can last. <laughs> You're swinging around. And be like, You've been there since 5 o'clock. <laughs> it's now 11. Same drink. Cause, uh, I'm balling on the bus. See, some of y'all going to the club, you can't even afford it. And you acting the part. And then ladies, you know, come on, ladies, you know. Matter of fact, you know, you know you can't fit in that. <laughs> and I don't understand. I don't understand. Why are you going to wear something so short if you're constantly going to be doing this? Oh, come on, church. Don't play me because I'm preaching real today. You know, you was there last night. You're like, man, you going through your Instagram feed. Delete, delete. Hey, ladies, you be in there. Mm, mm. Just twerking and everything. And why? And why? And then you get upset if the dude comes up. Hey, girl, hey, hey, I'm not no girl. You better treat me with respect. How? How am I supposed to respect you on that one? I mean, I'm just saying, like, how's it? 
I'm just saying, girl, you like, <laughs> you, <laughs> your actions is letting me know that I'm supposed to come up over there and be next to you. Come on, that just, that is not saying leave me alone. It's just it. <laughs> don't steal my dance either. <laughs> Matter of fact, you should dance like that. If you dance like that, everybody be looking at you like, what is wrong? What is, this is the spirit dance right here. Just keep everybody away. Everybody think I'm crazy. <laughs> but you be battling. You be battling with choices. You've made the right decision, but then immediately... Somebody calls you, somebody messages you, some, some, you see something, and it, and it sparks that, des, that, that evil desire on the inside of you to come back up again. And you battle with those choices. He says, man, if you just get connected with the Holy Spirit and let him get the seat right next to you, he can influence. You remember I said, whoever you hang out with the most is who you begin to act like, right? And a step further, whoever you hang out with the most, you begin to smell like them as well. Okay, look at this, look at this, look at this. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite from, that, from what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, and your choices are never free from this conflict. But when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, you are no longer subject to the, to the law. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, your lives will produce these evil results. Can I hit them? Sexual immorality. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Impure thoughts. Eagerness for lustful pleasure. Idolatry. Participation in demonic activities. Hostility. Quarreling. Jealousy. Outbursts of anger. Selfish ambition. Divisions. Um, can I say something real quick? It doesn't say adultery, but if you're involved in adultery, you're creating division. If you're sleeping with a married man or a married woman, you're creating division because now that man is struggling to decide between his wife, whom he's in covenant with, and you, who he's not in covenant with, and then you fool yourself thinking that he's going to cut a covenant with me, but if he's willing to break that covenant and divide and be... And if I'm a, a, a divider, I reap what I sow. So when I get married, I better be on the lookout because some divisions are going to be coming my way because I sowed it. And the church says, Aye. Divisions, the feeling that everyone is wrong except those in your own little group. Envy, drunkenness, wild parties. Ooh, this is a good translation. And other kinds of sin. He's like, look, even if I didn't mention it, other kinds of sin. If you have to ask the question if it's bad or not, it's probably bad. Like, I was trying to get some money exchanged the other day, and I went to this place, and it, 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 man, it felt really shady. It felt like something from The Wire. If you've never seen The Wire, don't worry about it, but it was, just, it was like, like a couple of guys hanging out front, and then it was like this little house, and I was... So I'm about to pull out all this money to get exchanged. And so the person wasn't there. I was like, man, that was the Holy Spirit. Made sure that dude that was not there. So I walked out, and then the dudes was like, oh, man, we can help you. We can make a plan. No, sir, because you don't want to see me on the news because if one of y'all touched my pocket the wrong way, <laughs> I'd be calling Auntie Joan. Hey, can you, uh, can you help me out? I'm in here preaching to everybody, letting them know, you know, let me out. I'm praying for the church to pray for me earnestly so that these jail walls can break and I can walk out of here freely, but the supernatural is not happening in my life right now. 
other kinds of sins. So you got to just be careful of the environments that you're in. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. So, so when he's in control, we begin to get a certain type of fruit. Love, joy, peace. That means I can lay down at night knowing that what I'm doing is correct and I'm at peace. I didn't get the money the wrong way. I did it the right way. I'm at peace. Peace, peace. All right, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here there is no conflict with the law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. If we are living now by the Holy Spirit, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Okay, Edson, come back, come back, come back. Okay, sit right here next to me. Okay, I'm the Holy Spirit. I'm dressed like the Holy Spirit anyway, so. I'm not saying you're not. Okay, whatever. I'm the Holy Spirit. Now, now, he's sitting in a seat. I, I'm sitting in a seat, okay? Because, now, now, now look at this. If the seat was empty, it'd be an empty seat. You're on real quick, come here, real quick. Run, 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 run. Ask him, is this seat taken? Say, what'd you say? It's empty. Okay, now I wrote it, sit there. Now, <laughs> he's evil. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> he's evil. So because now you've given the seat to someone you don't know, You've given the seat to someone who you know their character is foul. But yet you feel like being connected with them will maybe exalt you further. Because they have this seat next to you, they can begin to influence you in the evil desires. Okay, stand up. This time say it's taken. Okay, ask him about the seat. It's taken. Okay, say it's taken. <clears throat> You need to protect the seat next to you. I'm not talking about these seats because they're filled. There's, there's no empty seats in here. This church is packed to capacity. You might want to get here early. The Bible says call those things that be not as though they were. Okay, you start calling yourself married if you're single anyway. If, if, if I allow the Holy Spirit to sit here and influence me, he begins to control every area of my life. Okay, D do something with your hands, anything. I don't think you should do that. Especially if you're in Los Angeles. Because they might think you're a part of a gang. Okay, do something different with your hands. That's, that's a good statement right there. That, that matter of fact, that was sign language for something that you didn't even know. I know, it's, I know it's, it's, it's childish, but that's literally how the Holy Spirit, if you allow him to sit next to you, he'll begin to, don't, okay, matter of fact, don't do anything with your hands today. When you go to work today, say hello to everyone. But I don't want to. I'm telling you, just say hello to everyone. Why? I, just trust me. Say hello to everyone. And then you say hello to everyone, and then your boss sees that and says, you know what? Uh, we're getting ready to launch a new program called How to Be Friendly at Work, and we want you to run it, and it comes with a bonus. So you were, you were willing to argue with him, and he's trying to tell you, say hello to Why? Because he, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for, which means God's already prepared a bonus for him. He just needs to be listening to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, say hi to everyone. That's called being led by, which means if you're going to be led by the Spirit, then you should be very slow to do something.
before you jump into anything, Holy Spirit, is this the thing for me? I'm even in my own life, I'm taking myself like, man, I shouldn't have jumped into that thing so quick. I should have took some time and really sought the Holy Spirit because if I sought out the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't be having the fallout that I'm having now. Now I've got to ask the Holy Spirit to help me fix the situation, which means I have to spend more time and effort on fixing the thing. If I, if I have just entered in and let him speak to me before I entered into the thing, then I wouldn't have to spend my time on that. I could have my time on something else. Are you with me, church? So guess what? If, if that boy... Okay, sorry. That girl is not the one. I mean, you're married, but we're just... Okay. That girl is not the one. If it was a girl, that boy is not the one. Just listen. Why? Because he's going to say something to you that's going to cause you to question your morals and values, and you're going to end up pregnant, and he's going to leave. Oh, it's not going to happen. He's not like that. No. He says he loves me. He comes to church. But did he start coming to church before or after? Does the pastor know him? Check. But he doesn't like church. Check. He doesn't really think like God. Check. He doesn't know how to pray. Triple check. I want you to give this amount on Sunday. But Holy Spirit, you know, I usually give this amount. I want you to give this amount. Why? Because I want to set you up for something that's going to come next week. You with me? I've got to every day have a communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Before I even leave my house, I need to make sure that I've had some fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In the middle of my day, I need to make sure I have some, help, some fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Has anybody ever been given a task and you started it, and then in the middle of it, you kind of forgot kind of what the thing was, and you had to go back and read it again just to make sure you're on track? Holy Spirit. You get to the middle of your day, come back, hey, Holy Spirit, how am I doing today? Anything I can change? Anything, anywhere I can be better? Uh, anything that you see that's coming that I should know about? Okay, just checking in with you. At the end of the day, Holy Spirit, man, that was a great day. That, man, you were amazing today. Like, thank you, because we took the world together today. Holy Spirit tells you, hey, I want you to go lead that person to Christ. Man, I don't know how to do that. Just go up there and share your story on how you used to smoke Daha every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then when you tell them that story, they're going to be opened up. And then tell them how I took that taste away from you and you were delivered from it and you've been higher than you've ever been before just by serving me. And then you go and do it and then someone comes up to you after service and says, that was my story. Thank you. You helped me to get free from that thing. And the church says, I mean, that's my story. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. I used to smoke. Nah, this is before me and Lady T were really serious. Okay, we were kind of, okay, whatever. But she never smoked. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it's on the right story. I was going to say, we need to talk some more. So I need to be, come on, in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Only way I can do that is by being filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I can talk to him. The more I pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues. Some people think it's a crazy thing. But Jude 20 tells me that I'm building myself up on my most holy faith. And that allows me to track with the Spirit of God, allows me to track with the mind of Christ to keep me from doing what it is that I need to do or keep me from doing what it is that I should not be doing. Think about it. It's very difficult to really be worshiping God, having my mind on God, and thinking about something unpure. It's a difficult thing to be worshiping God as I'm on my way to doing something evil. So that means the more I focus and keep my mind and my attention on the Holy Spirit and having this connection with the Holy Spirit, when things come up, I know how to look for my way of escape. You with me? Every test, trial, and temptation has a way of escape. The Holy Spirit will show you the way. 
man, something was telling me not to do that thing, Holy Spirit. I didn't feel easy about that, Holy Spirit. Like, act like you're about to go do something. Keep going, keep going. I felt like, man, it was heavy, it was weighing me down. That was the Holy Spirit trying to keep. He has a, he, he has a subtle way but a direct way of letting you know he's tugging on you, telling you not to do that. As you're heading, come on, head down there like you're going somewhere. He's tugging at you. And he's, I hope your shirt doesn't snap. <laughs> he's tugging. But see, if you're, not, if you're not sensitive to it and saying, reacting to it, like, you know what? That, that's the Holy Spirit telling me not to. And then sometimes we play the game. Well, you know what? The Holy Spirit will fix it after I do it. I know, I know it feels bad. I shouldn't be doing it. I know the Holy Spirit is trying to tell me not to do this, but I just want to do it anyway. And guess what? Even as you're doing the thing that you're not supposed to do, that's a sin, that's against God, the Holy Spirit is still there looking at you like. You fornicate, he's looking at you like. You thinking I'm not there. I am, right? I'm looking. You smoking. You smoking. That was, that was, he's in your ear, that was dumb. You drinking, that, you, that is, that is not right. You know you is not, that was not supposed to, in the middle of it, he talking to you, you know you're not supposed to be drinking that, right? I think you should go ahead and put that thing down. He, he wants to be there in every fiber, every step that you take. He wants to be right, you know that wasn't, you know that wasn't right. You with me, church? Are you uncomfortable? Are you uncomfortable? You okay? My breath stink? It's the Holy Spirit. I think that would be funny. Huh? How you, what do you use to brush your teeth, Holy Spirit? <laughs> what toothpaste do you use, the Holy Spirit? What deodorant, the Holy Spirit? I'm just joking. But do you see what I'm saying, though? If we want to start living the right lifestyle and begin to see the supernatural in our lives, we've got to begin to have this relationship with the Holy Spirit, listening to him, sensing him, knowing when he's telling us to do and not to do. You with me, church? Thanks, Edison. Father God, we thank you. We praise you for this message, Lord. We thank you for all that you shared. Help us to understand what it means to serve you, what it means to obey you, what it means to be led by your spirit. So we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but we can begin to produce the fruits of the Spirit in our lives, Lord. Thank you that as I give these invitations that people will say yes to you. In Jesus' name. My first invitation is this. Maybe you need to be saved. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That's the first step of beginning to obey, beginning to change your life and transform your way of life and your way of thinking, being saved, accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That's a decision you can make on today. The second opportunity is this. Maybe you've abandoned God. Maybe you've abandoned Christ in your ways, in your thinking. You've been doing your own thing, living your own lifestyle, not even connect, acting like you're not even connected to him. And you realize, I need to recommit, rededicate my life to Christ. You can do that on today. You can get things right. You can th get things back in proper order so God can begin to bless you, so that God can begin to use you. You can rededicate, recommit your life to Christ today. My third and final one is, is being filled with the Holy Spirit. We talked about it. He wants to be that guide, that counselor, that teacher, that, that person that can help and comfort you, that person that can lead and direct you. The first thing you got to do is be filled with the Holy Spirit so he can be there to give you that unction, to give you that word, to give you that whisper, that nudge to say, hey, that's not the right thing to do. This is the right thing to do. This is how you work here. This is how you operate here. So you might need to be filled with the Holy Spirit on today. You can do that on today. So my first opportunity, the first one is to be saved. The second one is to rededicate, recommit your life to Christ. And the third and final one is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If that's you, I want you just to raise your hand when I get to three. Here we go. One. Lasting difference. Two, with Jesus. Three, remarkable life. Go ahead, raise your hand up. Pastor, I want to be saved. Pastor, I want to rededicate my life. Pastor, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, raise your hand up. Anybody by the uplifted hand? 
your body by the uplifted hand. All right, let's stand on our feet. Ask your neighbor to the left, to the right. Ask them, are you sure? Are you saved? Have you rededicated? Do you need to rededicate your life? Do you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit? Ask them really quickly, really quickly. Ask them, ask them, ask them. Say, if you're saying yes, I'm going to walk up front with you, get you connected. Tomorrow isn't promised. If they say yes, say, hey, look, let's walk up there together. Let's say yes together. Let's rededicate our lives. Let's get filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, everybody standing. Everybody ask your neighbor. Really could be that evangelist. Ask them. Check, 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 check. Are you saved? Ask them, are you saved? Do you need to rededicate your life? Do you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? There's no time like the present. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but we know where we are today. Anybody at all? Let's, let's do me a favor. Let's come and let's just sing a little bit. I'm going to give people an opportunity because I know there's some that need to say yes. I'm not going to rush this thing. I know there's some that need to say yes. real quick. We're just going to take some time. We're going to worship, set the atmosphere, let you make a decision. Do you need to be saved? If you do, just walk up to the front. If you need to rededicate your life, as we worship, just walk up to the front. Do you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Just walk up to the front. Nobody moving. Nobody leaving right now. Just take a second. Let's just reflect. Come on. Let's, we can sing. Let's just reflect. saved, you need to rededicate your life, you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. If that's you, I want you to boldly get out of your seat and come up to the front now. So I want to make that decision. I want to take that step to be saved, to maybe rededicate my life, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. everybody's saved did you get something today all right are you ready to give on this morning are you ready to give on this morning you say Holy Spirit what would you like me to give on this morning what do you want me to sow how much do you want me to sow remember we're giving into project 200 uh, we've got 85,000 that we need to collect for project 200 so continue to give towards that. Write on your envelope, Project 200, if you're giving towards that. Uh, make sure you're giving your tithes and your offerings as well to the general fund, general account for the church. So if you're giving towards the building fund, Project 200, make sure you write on your envelope, Project 200. If you're giving towards just the general account, you can write that on your envelope. Our banking details will be on the screen as well so that you can give. If you'd like to do an EFT giving, if you want to use our speed point, that's in the back as well. As you're preparing your offerings, just a couple of 
announcements. Don't forget, we've got groundwork Thursdays this coming Thursday, 1800 hours at the Hub, 44 Nissan Lost. You should come out to that. It's a great time of developing your faith, growing in faith, learning more about faith so that you can be ready uh, for the end of the year. We've just got a few weeks left until the end of our year as Koi. We start October 1 with a brand new, fresh year. Excited about that. So you can come out for Thursdays for groundwork, teaching you about faith, confession, and commitment. If you want to sign up for a connect group, you can do that at the Koi Cafe. If you've got a baby, you want that baby to be dedicated. Uh, we're having baby dedications on the 17th of September. You can sign up at the VIP desk if you want your baby to be dedicated. Chloe's getting dedicated on that day. Amen. And so she's going to have on a, a beautiful outfit. I know her mom. I know her mom. If her mom will do anything, she's going to look absolutely amazing on that day. And if you're interested in going to Botswana on a missions trip, uh, please remain after service. Uh, we have a meeting for you. And then if you're interested in being a part of the VOW, uh, a, a course that Lady T and I are putting together, a six-week course on learning how to be pure, how to remain pure and chaste in an unpure world. If you want to be a part of that, the vow, you remain after service as well. We're having an orientation for that course that we'll be uh, uh, giving uh, Lady T and I. So Botswana, you'll be over here. Uh, the vow, you'll be over here. And, and, and it'll be absolutely an amazing thing. I think I covered everything, yes? The vow. Oh, and then if you want to sign up, for the internship, uh, the Leaders Edge internship, uh, the paid internship, paid very well, at least one dollar, very well. Not just playing, but the paid uh, internship. You can see Audrey and So in the back. They have the forms for you to fill out, uh, and that starts in a few weeks as well. Amen. So if you're ready to give, raise your offerings up. I'll pray over them. Uh, we'll sow our seeds, and then we will be dismissed after that. Father God, we thank you. <clears throat> we praise you for this time of giving, this time of sowing into your kingdom, Lord. We thank you that every single need is met. There's no lack in any area of our lives. We live our lives in abundance to the full until it overflows, that you daily load us up with benefits. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. And sow your seed. Thank you.